the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. A very warm welcome to a service of the word for the feast of the baptism of Christ. As you can see, I'm back inside the vicarage again as we've taken the decision not to worship in church until the current situation improves. So, many thanks to Richard Brain for gearing up the Christchurch Virtual Choir again to provide the music. And particular thanks also to the Reverend Hazel for recording her homily at home, and to Stephanie and Caroline for the Bible readings, and to Judith for the prayers. Let us pray. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. From the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Here ends the first reading. Bring unto the Lord, O ye mighty, bring your rams unto the Lord. Ascribe unto the Lord worship and strength. Give the Lord the honour due unto his name. Worship the Lord with holy worship. It is the Lord that commandeth the waters. It 
it is the glorious God that maketh the thunder. It is the Lord that ruleth the sea. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedar trees. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanus. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanus also and Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. Yea, the Lord shaketh the wilderness of Cades. The voice of the Lord maketh the vines to bring forth young and discovereth the thick bushes. In his temple doth every man speak of reading from the Gospel of Mark. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the second reading. Today's Gospel described Christ's baptism by his cousin John the Baptist. and We hear that after Jesus was baptised, a voice from heaven said, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. It's a great comfort to Christians today, living through this pandemic, to know that we are each part of our great Christian fellowship we now call church. We unite in prayer to praise and thank God, to love God and love one another. Although meeting in a church building matters to us, it's the people, not the building, that is the church. In just the same way as you don't have to go to church to live a godly life, you don't have to be baptised either. I suppose it's the difference between being a guest at a club and being a member in the same way that a social club welcomes members and non-members alike. So does the church. Some, I suppose, may look upon the church as just a social club. It isn't. There's a great awakening for us as individuals when we realise for the first time that we are actually members of Christ's church. Not just our familiar local Church of England, but the whole worldwide Church of Jesus Christ 
encompassing all the various denominations. Even though there are probably more Christians in the world than there are members of any other religion, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is safety in numbers. We must never forget the persecuted Christians. We must be aware that even now people are killed because of their Christian faith. What's so special about being baptised a Christian? It's a ceremony marking the beginning of our membership of the church. It represents the entry of a person into the Christian faith from darkness to light, from being self-centred to being God-centred. It is through the administration of this sacrament that a Christian is publicly welcomed into the church and receives the first instructions of mission. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. The people baptised by John knew that he was special and indeed they wondered if John himself was the Messiah. John put them right by telling them that a person more powerful than he would be coming, who would baptise with the Holy Spirit. It would seem that on the day of Jesus' baptism, he was the last person to be baptised. We might expect the Son of God to have been baptised first, but he wasn't. We're reminded by Matthew that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. It's no coincidence that to this day water is used for baptism rather than milk or wine. Not only is water essential for our bodies inside, it also keeps the outside of our bodies healthy as well. The symbolism of water, of water is profound. It represents Christ washing away a person's sins and giving them a fresh start. Jesus himself gave clear instructions that the water of baptism should be poured in the name of the Trinity and that his followers were to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. At baptism, we become a member of the worldwide Christian church. And although we are one of so many, it is at this stage that we are given our name, our Christian name, our identity. Our surname is entered on the baptismal certificate, but at the actual baptism, only the Christian names are used. Out of all those millions of Christians, God knows each of us by name, the one we were given at our baptism, when we also received the Holy Spirit. Jesus' disciples have been baptising fellow Christians ever since Jesus gave the instruction to do so. Any Christian can baptise another. No special qualification is needed, but the words used are important. Within living memory, a person could only be buried in certain consecrated cemeteries if they'd been baptised using the accepted form of words. It is of utmost importance to many people that a dying person, whether young or old, should be baptised into the Christian faith before they die. Most people are baptised for life, a life with God, but some are baptised for death. Not so very different. There is one baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus called his own death and re resurrection a baptism. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. At the end of the baptism service, the candidate is usually given a candle, lit from the Paschal candle, which was first lit on Easter Sunday, to show that they have a mission to take Christ's light out into the world, because Christ is the light of the world. I will end with the words that are used at the end of the Church of England baptism service for you to reflect on. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Amen.
Jesus calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Washed clean by the waters of baptism, let us pray that we may live the life to which he has called us. Lord Jesus, Eternal Word, proclaimed as the Christ by John the Forerunner, hear us as we pray for all who proclaim your word. Lord of Truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, baptising with the Spirit and with fire, strengthen us to withstand all the trials of our faith. Lord of Truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, bringing forgiveness to all who repent, teach your church dependence on your grace. Lord of Truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, fulfilment of the promises of old, give hope to all who suffer or are ignored. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, beloved Son of the Father, anoint us with the gifts of your Holy Spirit. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, bringer of hope, share with all the faithful the riches of eternal life. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, in you the Father makes us and all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Christ, the Son of God, perfect in us the image of his glory and gladden our hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.